Okay. So um, the topic of today's presentation is uh, data vault. So as you know, data vault is one of the data warehouse modeling techniques. It's, uh, it's gained popularity over last years over other uh, other uh, solutions. And the presentation is based on two years of experience I had uh, uh, working with uh, with this technology. It's, I tried not to make it too theoretical, like by the book. It's more based on uh, what I've seen on the projects, what uh, architects deploy on the projects, and uh, uh, just to follow their best uh, practices. Uh, so you may you may see some uh, some discrepancies. Uh, for instance, if you follow follow uh, uh, the author of Data Vault, Dan Lynch, that's uh, uh, communication channels. Uh, okay. So the schedule for today is uh, first uh, what is generally um, data modeling, uh, where we use it. Um, then we move to uh, modeling approaches for data warehouse, right? That I presented three most uh, uh, most often used uh, techniques nowadays. Uh, then we just uh, move straight into discussing uh, how data vault uh, should be implemented, what are its key components, and so on. Then I presented a short, very short demo uh, for you to, um, to see how it might, might be implemented. And we'll finish with uh, some key takeaways as my thoughts over those two years that I wanted to uh, share with you. OK, so what is data modeling in general? Um, you could say data model is uh, the way you arrange tables inside uh, your data warehouse or generally database, so that you uh, present, uh, so, so it reflects the um, some business process that is supposed to reflect. Um, that's my personal definitions, uh, my personal definition. And so there are some uh, factors you should take into uh, consideration when uh, designing this model. And uh, those uh, factors are mentioned here. It's speed of I.O. So generally, um, uh, inserts, updates, um, this sort of operations, uh, you know, disk space uh, saving, right? Um, how, how much disk space does the model uh, require? Uh, uh, easiness to prepare uh, queries or reports for data analysts, right? It's also important factor whether they can work directly with the model or there should be some additional layer on the top of it. Um, level of detail is uh, how, how easy you integrate uh, a certain uh, level of grain of the, let's say, data into your data model. And of course, historization, right? So uh, a data warehouse, by definition, should preserve uh, all uh, history of what has been going on inside the transaction database, right? Uh, so uh, we have two main approaches for data modeling. The first one is OLTP, which stands for Online Transaction Processing. Uh, those are systems that traditionally are um, are based on a relational database, um, so uh, and host user-facing applications, right? So we can imagine, for instance, if you have a banking uh, system, then you then you uh, prepare your database on Oracle, uh, for instance, right, to store your transactions and uh, figures. Uh, those systems traditionally have been modeled in a third in, in in a methodology that is called third normal normal form, right? And so this is highly um, highly uh, normalized uh, methodology, right? Uh, so uh, and it's stress in speed of uh, is on speed of I/O operations and saving disk space because traditionally disk space used to be expensive uh, 
now we know that, uh, let's say, uh, a modern application such as uh, social media um, platforms might want to store data in a different fashion, but uh, we cannot discuss uh, every pos possibility. And so I, I just wanted to prepare a quick demo for you. Uh, uh, what is normalization? Uh, because some of you may not know. Uh, so basically, this is uh, storing redundant data. Uh, in different tables, as we have uh, on the example uh, below, uh, we have a list of tournaments, years when they happen, and, and uh, we have winner and winner's birthday. So traditionally, to normalize this data, we would want to store uh, tournaments separately, so they have their uh, their separate, unique uh, identifier associated with the tournament rather than the player who won it, right? Uh, this is why we split uh, such a um, table into two tables. One is for tournaments itself, and it would have usually uh, a key to the person that won it, uh, referencing a table with this person's details. OK. But the other approach, uh, usually associated with data warehouses, is called OL, uh, OLAP, yes, which stands for uh, Online uh, Analytical Processing. And um, this approach um, is, uh, is different because the requirements of a data warehouse are different. Uh, instead of uh, focusing on recording transactions and updating the data, uh, we move towards uh, easiness of reporting, right, uh, level of detail and uh, preserving the history. Uh, so usually with data warehouse, you do not uh, implement um, too many, uh, you, do, you don't uh, change the data, you just uh, query it. Uh, okay, okay, we've got a useful link um, for the um, normalization. Um, okay, thank you for that. Right, so those are those are like by the book. Those are two main approaches to modeling uh, data, right? And um, okay, so uh, after uh, knowing this and uh, knowing that data warehouse would be a focus for today, let's have a look at how we can arrange tables uh, so that we store data in the data warehouse. So it fulfills the aforementioned, uh, uh, form, aforementioned uh, conditions, yes. So first, and uh, I think most popular uh, data modeling uh, methodology is called uh, Kimball methodology or multidimensional methodology, um, which distinguishes two main types of tables. Uh, one is dimension. So dimension would be uh, dimensions would be usually, um, how to say it, uh, labels that describe data. For instance, uh, a name of the um, person, of an employee, right? Uh, this is dimension or his position or, uh, or his uh, title, job title, right? For instance, and we have facts. Uh, facts uh, we usually associate with data such as sales figures, uh, which we can see also on the picture, right? Uh, so numbers uh, that are associated with uh, different uh, types of labels. Uh, for instance, uh, for given location, we can have uh, um, some of aggregate numbers, yes. Uh, for different shops, we can have uh, aggregate numbers and uh, so on and so on. Uh, so it's key features, uh, key features of this uh, uh, modeling techniques is, uh, as I mentioned, it's very popular. It's, uh, it's been integrated over years with uh, the, um, reporting tools, right? So you, in most of the popular reporting tools, you will find support for um, for this dimensional modeling, uh, of course, it provides historization. Uh, can be implemented into um, to various uh, 
uh, to various types. One is very simple, it's just one on this picture, right? We have uh, we have one uh, fact table surrounded by dimensions, and uh, if we want to add some more complexity to the model, we create uh, and this is called star, yes. And if we want to add more complexity, we will call it uh, snowflake. It may be, uh, for instance, different uh, location hierarchy, right? Mm. Okay, as as I mentioned, it's uh, not very agile as well. Uh, so it's um, because uh, because you have to usually define your uh, your dimensions and uh, facts before uh, before creating. Uh, so you, for for instance, you cannot add a dimension uh, to a fact table that easily, right? And that's why we say it's not very agile. And um, as I said, it's, uh, as I mentioned before, it's also difficult to track more complex uh, dependency, uh, for instance, parent-child relations or hierarchies, right? Okay, so <laughs> uh, I think that, uh, that uh, so next one approach that I wanted to discuss is data vault, of course. Mm -hmm. And uh, the picture tells the story why uh, why we have today's uh, a title of the presentation. Mm. It's uh, for those who didn't notice. It's the it's the same model from uh, from the Kimball method, just implemented in Data Vault, right? So we see that instead of uh, we can move back for a second instead of five tables, right? Clients, shops, locations, receipts, and sales figures uh, to track all the dependencies that are possible to happen. We would have uh, these many tables, right? So it's a more complex. Um, it's definitely a more complex model um, on the first glance, right? And the data vault uh, consists of three main types of table. Those are hubs um, that contain business key and it's hashed version um, and are usually immutable. Uh, satellites, uh, which contain, uh, which contain uh, attributes, uh, all attributes, including, uh, including uh, what we would call facts in the data vault, so including metrics and provide historization for them. And the third, uh, the third uh, type of table is uh, called link. And links, uh, as we see on the picture, provide, uh, provides um, uh, relation, preserve relation between given entities. So in this model, we don't distinguish what is a metric, what is, uh, let's say, dimension or attribute. We just treat every entity separately. Uh, so each entity will have a satellite, hub, and a link uh, connecting it to other uh, entities. Mm. So the key features of this uh, modeling approach is uh, that it's uh, very uniform, right? As I mentioned, uh, each uh, entity is treated separately. Uh, it does track historical changes. Um, um, it's uh, it's uh, I I also heard uh, like this description. It's like low processed uh, model. It doesn't uh, contain too much uh, processing uh, um, data manipulation based on the source. So it, it should be pretty similar to what the source look like. Uh, so on the cons side, um, as you see, data modeling is very complex, uh, requires many joins, which can, which can be a disadvantage uh, in case of uh, large data sets, such as, I don't know, IoT. For instance, it might be even impossible to perform so many joins, right? And it's difficult uh, to report, right? It's um, the data is not structured as neatly as Kimball model. Mm. Okay, the third one, uh, the third and last uh, model I wanted to discuss is uh, called, this approach is called Inmon, and usually it refers to um, data in third normal form as well, model inside of um, data warehouse, so it's pretty similar to 
transaction database systems, and uh, we can see the same model um, based on Kimball approach, right? Uh, so, uh, so for instance, receipts are not directly connected with the uh, sorry, uh, sales figures are not directly connected with uh, each uh, each dimension, so to say, right? So it would require more processing. Uh, more querying uh, to for from analysts uh, to um, prepare reports from this model. Uh, I've seen also variations of this one uh, combined with data vault, um, which uses um, data vaults. Uh, we haven't mentioned it yet, but maybe some of you know data data vaults. Uh, data vault uses the hash keys right to perform joins right. So I've seen also. Uh, like hybrid between Inmon and uh, and uh, Data Vault to use hash keys, um, but avoid uh, avoid too many joins. Um, okay. So now let's move to Data Vault. Um, so key concepts of Data Vault of Data Vault uh, based, as I mentioned, is based on uh, modeling entities and um, deriving entities from the data. Mm, so entity would be just, uh, just correspond to, to, uh, 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 to a person, right? Or something that has business uh, meaning. And uh, we can see two entities here. One is employee. It's the first one on the top. And the other one is department. Uh, so, for instance, uh, in source system, we would have two tables. One is employees, and second one is departments, uh, which contain both some uh, attributes and a key. Right? So employee key has uh, employee table has a department key, so that we are able to join them. And how to model this simple relation in data vault? Um, so first, we would create something called hub. Hub uh, uses uh, uses uh, employee business key to associate it with a hash key, right? So it stores just and only the the business key, and uh, both in hash key and in normal form. And uh, of course, some metadata call. Uh, once we have hub, uh, we can uh, we can create satellites. So the table that is supposed to keep our history and uh, keep our attributes and metrics. Uh, so hub will be directly joined to uh, sorry, satellite will be directly joined to hub by uh, hashkey by employee hashkey. Uh, it's got the metrics. Uh, it also has uh, hash diff. And hash diff is uh, uh, MD5 hash of all of the attribute columns that we want to historize, and it is used for uh, historization while loading the data to a data warehouse. We compare hash diffs instead of comparing different values. Uh, among different columns, right? And of course, metadata columns, um, right? So what, what happens when we change data in the um, in our source, right? How will the history look like? Um, okay, so we have the record on top that is uh, update in the source system. We see that John Doe now has a leave date, right? So one of his attributes has changed and we have uh, some metadata also called insert date when it was inserted or modified by the source system. So what will happen now in, um, in data vault, we will have uh, two, in satellite, we will have uh, two different um, records for uh, John Doe. As we know, we track all the changes and data vault is uh, insert only environment, which means we do not uh, perform any updates. Mm. So uh, as I said, by comparison of hash keys, uh, sorry, hash diff, 
uh, for all these columns, we can determine that the records is different, uh, then insert into satellite the new version with updated leaf date. Mm. And we also set uh, those um, metadata valid from, valid, valid to. Uh, valid to will usually be mm, we, we uh, will usually be appended with some uh, high, very high value of uh, very high value of date, right? Such as in this case, we have uh, year nine uh, nine thousand nine hundred ninety nine, right? Uh, which means it's the most fresh record. Uh, if we if we then try to filter out only the most uh, fresh records, uh, we would uh, we would. A query with this date, or sometimes in some implementation, uh, satellites also have another column which is called something like is active flag, and uh, it will contain, for instance, one for active records. So um, only one active record for John Doe after those changes. Okay. Uh, another concept. Uh, from data vault is link. As we discussed, uh, links would typically look like this. It will contain its own unique key and uh, keys to the uh, entities that is uh, connecting, right? So we will see that, for instance, this uh, is, you cannot say it directly, but this record is from John Doe. It refers to the office in which uh, he resides and uh, contain some metadata calls, right? Mm. So that, 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 okay, so maybe I'll go back for a second. Um, okay, we have a question. Well, okay. Okay, so first question, do we have one satellite table for each actual table? Uh, that's a good question. Actually, we have usually more because there we have uh, one satellite table for per source, right? So if uh, employees' records come from two sources such as SAP and Salesforce, uh, they will have one common uh, hub, but they will have two different satellites, each keeping uh, attributes from uh, the source system. And the satellites should union, right? And um, well, of course, if if a regular uh, cases in which uh, satellite is not necessary, for instance, we have immutable ta table, right, which contains only business uh, key, then we do not need a uh, satellite. Um, hope that answers your question. Okay, uh, you mentioned insert only, but in case of new version insert to satellite, we need to close the previous active record so valid too. Yes, that's a very good point, uh, Irene Oz. Uh, we will be discussing how it's uh, done during the demo. Mm. So I can tell you that uh, usually the records are first deleted from history and then reinserted after update. It, it depends on the implementation, but that's a very common practice I, I've met with that all records from a satellite where the history changes will be deleted and then reinserted with corrected um, with corrected valid to a column. Okay, uh, yes, links and one final, uh, sorry. <laughs> One final note to link is that uh, it uh, can also model many-to-many uh, -many relationships, uh, such as uh, so it can work also as a bridge, right? Uh, which is very convenient. Um, okay, and uh, let's say uh, links. Uh, what is interesting also can have their own satellites, which which keep track of the incoming changes for a given relation. Uh, so uh, we will see it on the demo as well. But for instance, in this case, uh, the uh, department key changes in employee tables, the uh, third table, which means we will have to um, we we have a change of relationships uh, um, relationship between those two. Uh, between those two entities, uh, between uh, for this record between those two entities, uh, 
Right, so we will see something uh, like this. Uh, it depends on the implementation, but link, for instance, can be sometimes it is there is active, or sometimes uh, it will stay uh, it will stay um, unchanged, right? And uh, there is a new record to satellite. Uh, Sorry, not link, but satellite to link for the first records. So this is the first relation we had. So it was San Francisco, now it's Mexico. So San Francisco uh, satellites to link will be uh, will be appended with null, which will have the high timestamp time value, which means it's no longer an active uh, relationship. And there will be no new record created in satellites to link for a relation between John Doe and Mexico uh, with active flags at one. Yes. Okay. Mm, I'll check the time. Okay, so it's been half an hour. Okay, I think uh, we can start the demo. Uh, so I prepared a very short demo for you. Mm, hope it's understandable mm, and hope it uh, hope it um, okay hope it will um, make everything uh, clear mm -hmm. so we have a simple data set in excel mm -hmm. this is the data set based on kaggle and this uh, sales report and um, i highlighted the uh, different entities based on their business context i would say right uh so we have sales such as uh, we have first entity is order we would call something like order right it has parameters such as uh, quantity price and date and then we have product the product that was sold which uh, has a description and um which has description and code we have a customer that bought a certain product and uh, his or her details. And also we have a country where the transaction occurred. Okay, uh, so we move to Snowflake. Um, I prepared already some uh, database objects based on this, um, based for this demo, right? So we have uh, it's a simplified approach so that we uh, we do not uh, want to spin an entire data warehouse for this um, for this task, right? Rather focus on, on the basics of uh, and showing how to historize records and how to let's say update them. We have hub order, hub product, uh, link between them, and satellite to link, right? And of course, the satellite for product. Uh, so, first question is, um, since we have an uh, order and we have uh, its uh, metrics, uh, do we know which table, uh, which table we should store uh, the metrics of the order? So, my initial instinct for, uh, for instance, was uh, we should uh, uh -huh. We have the data set in the Snowflake prepared. Uh, so it looks like this. It's one to one from the Excel file. So my initial instinct when I saw this was to uh, store uh, order details uh, such as quantity and price in uh, satellites. But uh, then when you when you uh, look into the data it's uh, clear that uh, one order number can have uh, multiple occurrences right mm -hmm. so it's not unique and we can see the details why this happened um, it's because um, uh, it's because as you can see here one order number can have multiple uh, products mm. So there can be, let's say, one tra uh, one transaction that uh, is included inside one order, but uh, refers to many products, right? So we can buy motorcycles. Uh, okay, so th those are different types of uh, motorcycles. 
And this is why um, this is why I want, I'm sorry. Uh, this is why I came up with something like this, uh, that um, the order details, instead of satellites for order, right? So we have hub for, uh, for order. Uh, usually we would create a satellite for order, but because of this relationship, it, uh, the order details are properties of actually satellite link, right? So we'll have um, links between products and orders. And for each of them, we will store uh, we will store uh, quantities. So it's uh, it's uh, it's an important thing to remember that we do not always store uh, we do not store all the attributes inside satellites. And sometimes this can be related to relation, and uh, and uh, that's when we store it in satellite to link. Okay, uh, the data structure looks like this. Mm. We can see that the hash keys are generated. We have order number. We have business keys such as order number, product code, yes. And the relation is uh, working fine. Mm. We can then take a look at its table individually. We have hub order. Where we keep our uh, business key, we keep our uh, hash key and metadata columns um, link to link to um, sorry link looks like this it will contain a uh, uh, unique key to uh, foreign keys and insert dtm uh, sorry this hash, the hash diff should not be here so uh, it should be excluded from link it should be instead in satellite to link of course mm. So there we there we have satellite to link, uh, which preserves uh, link's history. Right, we have uh, it's joined to satellite to link by uh, by the same hash key, which is called the order product hash key. Right, and it is pre preserving uh, quantities, all attributes, and has timestamp valid from and valid to. Right. Uh, okay. So, oh, oh, sorry. Mm. So then, what um, we can take a closer look at one uh, one of the orders. Uh, it will be uh, it will be um, looking like this, right? So everything is reflected. All the quantities are preserved, and attributes are stored, and we have uh, keys. Okay. So what happens if we uh, update? Uh, sales figures mm. yes uh, if we update one of these sales figures with a new value so for instance uh, for uh, order number 10 134 and product uh, product as uh, 24 yeah this, this one so for this line we insert new data right uh, with different values now let's say an accountant made a mistake while uh, while uh, processing the invoice, right? And uh, the values that we had previously are uh, stored in the wrong order. So now uh, the accountant, let's say, and the transaction system makes the correction. So we will insert a, insert a record to our data set with different values with the same keys but different values of quantities okay one row inserted let's take a look at this record okay. oh sorry it's not here uh, it's uh, it should be okay. So that's this one. Okay, so new new record with uh, oh no, sorry, uh, I'll have to type this query and um, okay, sales figure stage sales figure, so it should be here. Order number. 
equals ten. So I'm trying to find this record as when it says that we can also specify um, product um, product code. Mm. stage so of course oh yeah so you see the mm, the record from uh, from yesterday was overwritten with the record from today right so we skip other uh, columns such as address and so on for simplicity but what is the most important, the quantities have changed, right, um, for this uh, product. Uh, so we will, we would like to reflect this in our uh, history. Mm. Uh, the current history, uh, so for history, we can find first the, uh, the key to satellites to link which is order product hash key, right? We can find it uh, for given order number and product code. So we just perform a couple of joins. And then current history looks like this, right? There's just one record from yesterday and contains all the values. Uh, so what we should do, we should run our procedure that uh, loads and historizes the data. I hope it works. Let's check if it worked. Um, okay. Huh. Okay, interesting. Um, looks like it didn't work. Well, Well, I haven't tested this one before, but it should be fine. Okay, it doesn't work. Okay, so <laughs> sorry, some uh, some discrepancies uh, on the on our test, but uh, yeah, but uh, the way it should look, it should be. Um, mm -hmm. Let me find this maybe from from yesterday, like for this one. Yeah, from my tests, right? Um, quantity ordered uh, and price each is overwritten, right? We have uh, we have new value. Uh, we have new uh, values for timestamps. Uh, so the first record was valid from yesterday till uh, one minute before the insertion of the new record, and uh, this new one is valid uh, indefinitely for now, right? And so maybe let's take a look, a quick look at the procedure, what it looks like. Uh, procedure for historizing data. So I'll copy this. Uh, I'll copy this into separate tab. Okay. Sure. Question. Okay. Uh, question. Um, okay. We're running a bit of out of time, uh, so maybe let's save all the questions for a Q and A session. And I hope you all make it. <laughs> so it's just a simple procedure. Yes, we create a temporary table to store the records that we want to update. And then we create delta, which is uh, if we run, maybe we can run delta. Let's make sure it goes. 
So basically, this is uh, based on. Uh, Yeah, we, we compare hash diffs. Uh, so hash diff of the new record should not be present in the um, inside the um, inside the satellite, right? And uh, of course, keys should match. Then we union it with uh, all the data, um, prepare the last column, which is uh, valid uh, to DTM, right? Uh, Usually I've seen it implemented like this. So this is just a lag partition by, uh, by key and the uh, order by uh, timestamp, right? And in case it's null, then we will put, uh, that is the exact case where we put the high timestamp. Okay, uh, then we insert it to, uh, then we insert it to a temporary table that stores all the, uh, or the modified data, we delete the data in the existing table and replace it with the, with the new data. Okay, uh, so that's how it should look in theory. Unfortunately, uh, unfortunately, couldn't uh, didn't have time to test it uh, to test it on the data that I want to modify. Okay, so before the questions, uh, let's just uh, briefly sum up uh, sum up the main takeaways uh, of the data vault. Uh, so, uh, in my experience, the main takeaways are just uh, two. Compared to Kimball, for instance, we have parallelism due to hash keys, which means that key columns uh, are uh, derived based just on a business key we don't use we don't need to use uh, techniques like identity or sequence number right we just derive them uh, straight from the existing business key which means we can process all tables independently of each other which is uh, super important uh, during the warehouse maintenance when you have to reload one table or check one table, right? And we, know, we all know that Kimba, for instance, has uh, this loading dependencies. And the second one uh, that I personally find it uh, very mm, true is that it's very auditable, right? We can uh, structure every entity as we, uh, as we want and, uh, you know, we track so many things. We are able to track so many things very easily with Data Vault. Like, as I said, the changes to attributes, changes to relationships, uh, then uh, for instance, uh, for instance, this is a good application for uh, some, um, some systems that require high auditability. And uh, disadvantage, disadvantages, it's, uh, as I said, it's normalized very highly, very many joins. So big data appliances might be difficult. And it requires uh, one additional layer of reporting. This is why I've seen many, many times uh, that above data vault, there was a Kimball layer, right? So uh, from, the, from the data vault where the history was preserved, uh, there was additional uh, layer of Kimball created um, just to uh, just to support reporting. Okay, <laughs> so uh, we're a bit late, but uh, I hope you enjoyed this uh, short lecture. Uh, if you have a question, then I guess now is the time to ask them. Yeah, so if I can ask. Do you hear me? Yes. Uh, yes. Hi. Yeah. Hello. Like first, like uh, this hashing of the keys. So um, for me, it's still not clear. Like, why do we just need a separate key which is completely derived on the like a pro of the natural key? So why we cannot just use a nat natural key? Uh, that's a good question. But remember that uh, hashed key can compose of many keys. So, for instance, in the example, hash diff composed of uh, four keys. Uh, so normally you would have to uh, join on four keys that are, uh, for instance, that can be very long, right? Let's say you have a business key. That usually doesn't happen, but you can have a business key that has uh, 100 characters, right? And uh -huh. hash key, MD5 makes whatever is 
uh, input it, it will make a 32 byte string, right? So uh, whatever, it doesn't matter what's the input, it will generate a 32 yeah. um, long uh, string. Yeah, so basically for normal IDs, it doesn't make sense, but if you have a complex key with a string and et cetera, so this is like a unification. Uh, yes, yes, for instance. Yeah, like uh, from my understanding, this data walls is the next level of the Iman. So if you have third normal form, they like even detail it. Uh, yeah, it's, it's okay. It's true. Yes, it's also more uniform, I think. Than uh, I've never worked with Inman, so I don't uh, have too much okay. experience. But uh, to be fair, it's very uniform. That's its feature, right? So uh, whether you have employees and departments, if you want to add, uh, let's say, locations as a third table, you will model it the exact the same way, right? So um, maybe that is why it is so popular. Mm -hmm um no and, and like why this level of complexity is like accepted like it became super complex and how it helps how this what this complexity reduce and why do we really need it so as i said sometimes we don't need it then uh, it can the model can be modeled differently for instance as i said hybrid we use, ha we use hash keys, and so hash key and hash diff, for instance, to track history, but we use uh, just normal uh, tables, right? So, so like a third normal form, something like this. I've seen uh, something like this all, on my last project. Mm. But uh, if, as I say, if you really want to track dependencies, for instance, uh, the history of how an employee joined, uh, sorry, uh, change the departments, then you can track it in data vault for sure. The, so that's audibility, right? And then if uh, it's a crucial imp of crucial importance for the business to know how many departments uh, have changed, uh, whether his name has changed uh, over years, you know. But uh, like in general, we can do the same in the two previous approaches using the simple SCD if we would like to, or how this historization is better than like a standard one. Yeah, but uh, how do you historize relationships in standards? Mm -hmm. Okay, you right. just, yeah, so as I say, you just historize, uh, you just historize uh, attributes. attributes. Mm -hmm. so, but relationships are especially are also historized and they can be, let's say, switched to active, inactive, for instance, uh, as we've seen. So, uh, so we can model something like this. Employee worked in Mexico, then moved to San Francisco, then moved to, uh, I don't know, to uh, Berlin, for instance, from the office. And uh, in some applications, uh, business uh, people, uh, sorry, business users, uh, I do want to have such a level of detail. Mm, okay, fair. Yeah, thank you. Okay, thank you uh, for <laughs> for asking questions. Does anybody have any more questions? Okay, so I hope it's all understood. It's mm -hmm, yes, you don't know. Yeah. Uh... I'm I'm just uh, wondering, uh, have you seen any uh, appliance on uh, uh, data lake, uh, for example, using some object storage like S3, when where we are not so flexible in updating and uh, deleting particular uh, uh, records? So for big data, and no, I haven't seen. I have seen it used on data warehouses, and that's uh, where it's uh, most often should be used. I think, as I said, like. Uh, for big data, it might be just too complex of a model. In my in my view, of course, uh, of course, probably if you read uh, Linstead's uh, policy, the author's publications, he will claim that uh, it's uh, it's suited for big data. Like we tried, uh, like even not a certain normal form, we ended up with one flat table. It simply yeah, exactly. doesn't work. <laughs> Yeah, that's uh, that 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 can be true. Yes. Okay, so we've uh, 
if we have no more questions, uh, 